Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and we're going to continue on with the saga of the belt grinder and of course Sunday this past Sunday was the steel challenge and I did really good. We uh, The range was too wet for two of the outdoor pistol ranges we used so we appropriated one other one that we don't normally use. We only shot four stages instead of five and my previous best four stage time was 80 seconds or 80 point something. This time I did it in 60.6 seconds so here I am bragging about it and uh, we had like 40 people show up for it and I was on a particular squad where we had I guess four or five ladies and uh, one of them has a, a channel where she puts videos of her going to various and sundry shooting competitions it's called tactical poppins now of course that's a pun playing on Mary Poppins and the fact her pistol goes with a little popping noise although her camera kind of kind of shuts it off and makes you go squit 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 <laughs> but anyway uh, I'm going to put a link down there to her video she made at this steel challenge it's like a minute and a half you know so you could be satisfied for a minute and a half of curiosity she shoots first in the video and then the the old guy that puts on this uh, event shoots next and you say well what are, what are I actually come wandering through there in the front of the camera without being aware they're you know they're doing any video and I remember somebody saying don't stand in front of the camera but lucky for me I wandered off I I didn't I didn't know what they were talking about until I saw the video but anyway it's down there in the information box and uh, it's turning colder in Houston and we're going to be going to Landell <coughs> excuse me we're going to be going this Saturday to Lindale, Texas, where it's going to be colder than Houston, I guess. Although the weather forecast says it'll have a high of 60. So, we'll see. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's just go ahead and get on with this thing now that we're here. I had to stop right in mid-project to do this. Suppose you've got one of these saws and you want to cut several pieces the same size. Well, what you've got is this little piece right here to come up here. That's a stop in there. Every time you shove them out, you can stop them there. And that's wonderful, except for when your blade cuts through there, this piece is going to turn sideways, jam your blade, make it come off the wheels. So you learn right away you've got to move this out of the way. Well, that's no good. What good is it? If if you can't use it over and over. So that's when I come up with this idea. I can take this little piece, put him on there, set this guy where I want it. This is the size that I'm going to be cutting the next time around. So I tighten down my little ring there. huh? So then the next time I want to come up, it's set there. I set this with uh, my Allen wrench. Put the next piece in there. When I get, get it in there, start cutting. I let go of that. Next piece I want to do, come up and put it right back there. Shove the piece up against it. This little ring will maintain my location for me and not get in the way, won't hold anything, and make this actually a usable thing. Because otherwise, it's not really useful at all. I think even Bubba would like that. In fact, I think even Bubba could understand it. Well, in the last video, I said the Arduino needed uh, to have the power cut back, you know, to uh, nine volts and I had no idea what the heck I was talking about actually I looked it up the Arduino can run on anywhere from 7 to 20 volts and they they kind of like it if you use 9 to 12 so I took the brick that I was running the, the LED lights on and I put that hooked that up to run the Arduino and it looks to me like uh, that was the thing to do because now the problem I had where it would boot up and then crash and boot up and crash, all that's gone and you can see that it's it's running the spindle down. It's 
so you can make it run the spindle down faster. So all this sort of thing is, uh, is I think mostly all started out now. I'm, I'm really and truly actually through making changes on that stuff. Except I may want to put a, a power switch in for the stepper motor controller. I think they call it a smooth stepper or something. But finally caught up on this part. And then now I'm going to get my vise back on here and everything back to normal and then we'll start cutting some pieces out of this uh, 3 8 inch plate. This is the part I've been hating and here it comes. Alright, so these two pieces have got to be cut out of the uh, 3 8 inch thick metal. And I've marked off, I took him out of Randy Richard's scribe there and I've marked off this piece right here on the end, I can get both pieces out of that one spot there. We've got it marked for the holes already. And uh, so from now, I'll have to try and get the bandsaw to cut close to the line, but not on it or through it or anything like that. That's going to be probably one heck of a job for me, but that'll be the next step. So away we go. Uh, well, <clears throat> after some sawing and grinding and all that sort of thing, I've got these two pieces up ready to drill holes. This gets a, a threaded hole. This is a half inch. And this is a half inch. <coughs> Excuse me, right there. I don't know what's got wrong with my throat here. But anyway, that's where I'm stopping for the day. I've had enough. It's 8 o'clock. And I figure that's long enough to be out here. Last week I participated in another auction. It was when it ended this Wednesday. And uh, they showed this as one of the items. And I bid $4 for it. I thought that would be alright. And I couldn't read this right here. But it's actually a wrench for an ER32 collet chuck. You know, it's just right. And... Like I said, I bid four bucks on it and I got it. It's the only thing I got. They had lots of end mills and things and I didn't get any of those because uh, every time I bid more, somebody else bid even more, you know. And, you know, it got out of sight. But anyway, about this wrench, I thought I was getting one wrench. But when I went in and picked up my stuff, there was four of them in the package. So, I guess I got uh, ER32 collet wrenches for a buck a piece. Not that I need four of them, but this is a nice, nice wrench. <laughs> so, there you go. When I got up this morning, it was 57 degrees outside, and it's not warm enough any, but it's 67 here in my shop. And this jacket, it's just, it's too hot. It's too cool for short sleeve shirts. I'm going to have to go in the house to see if I have a two-pocket long sleeve shirt. So you guys take a nap and I'll be back. Even though I'd laid it out with a ruler and all that, scribed it, I went ahead and uh, laid it out with the DRO. After all, if you got it, why not use it? Makes sense to me. This one's got to be a 3 16th uh, 16 right here. And according to my chart, I think I got the right drill bit. So we'll go ahead and let the, the spindle feed down through there. Let me just double check before I do it. All right, I got the right drill bit, so let's, uh, let's get on with it. That's the power feed. Let's put some threads in the hole. <clears throat> Seems every time I grab a, a tap, the wrench is too big or too small. Let's 
straight. I think that's that's it. Now dang it all. Pierre said chamfer before you tap. I remember distinctly that he said that. But I already tapped it. That burn it. Pierre's gonna get it. Don't say don't look at me like that, Pierre. Don't don't look at me like that. I hate milling steel. You always get these dang little bitty things that get stuck in your finger. Like tiny little super sharp needles that all right, I got that one. A lot of fun. I think it's good to make scribe marks and stuff on there. It gives you that sanity check for later on when you're just about to screw up and you look at it and say, oh, that's not the way I marked it. All right, so these two pieces are finished. They've got half inch size holes where they had, should all have half inch and they've got a three eighths where they should have a three eighth and they're all lined up one with the other perfect so now to move on to another piece all right so I gotta cut out a couple of pieces for the hinges and those others for the hinges too this is for the for the hinges that are kind of crooked over L shaped you know and uh, One's not as big as the other. This is for the big one. It's got the little curve in it, you know, curved hole. And I'll work that out too when I get down to it. There's going to be a lot of cutting here, so I'm going to put you guys to sleep. These are the hinge pieces I'm working on. Right now I'm trying to cut out a piece to make that. And right behind it I'll cut out a piece to make that. And there'll be a lot of on there. The mail came while I was taking my break. Got a couple of stickers here. Everett's workshop from Everett Falk up there in Canada. I know Canada is pretty close to Canuckstan where AVE lives and I never thought to ask Everett if he, if he knows AVE or has met him but I know they're up in the same area you know Canada, Canuckstan, both of them are or bordering each other or something and uh, eh, maybe someday I'll find out who knows miracles could happen I could actually run across AVE sometime I, of course I wouldn't recognize him nobody's ever seen his face okay what we want to make here is a arc that a boat can go through and this will be the stationary part behind the hinge where you can roll it over and tighten the clamp down against this piece here and you can see where I drew the arc over there and this vise has uh, a swivel feature to it and the hole that's going to be the bolt hole for this thing I managed to get it situated right above the exact center of this uh, vise you know and if you keep foreign objects out of your vice, it uh, it can do a good job like this. Okay, so what I need to do is move it over two inches because from the center of the hole to the center of my part that I want to cut, the slot, is two inches. So, where is the, where's the little fella? Alright, you can see I'm running the spindle down while we're doing this other stuff but I believe if we come over here two inches that we will find ourselves exactly in the right spot to cut an arc now I've, I've not done it this way before <laughs> in fact I don't know if I ever even cut an arc before but if this works out well it'll be wonderful I don't know if it will or not. After all, this is uh, just an idea that I had, and uh, it could be half baked like a lot of the other ideas that I have. All right, so it's a little bit, and we'll see what happens. 
Now, hold on a minute, folks. I, I'm getting an alert here. What, what the deal is, I have a, a video camera hidden away in Pierre's garage. And Pierre and Phil don't know anything about it, so y'all keep, you know, kind of keep it quiet. But I'm getting an alert that there's activity in Pierre's garage, so let's check and see what's going on there. Hey, Pierre, come here. Look what? at this redneck. He's going to make usually some pretty good disasters. Welcome, <laughs> Come in. Jeez. I think you need some safety gear. Yeah, I think so. Ooh. Ooh. Go. Ready? Gloves. I mean, no, no, you're fine, you're fine. Just gloves. No, this. I mean, I'm getting scared. Yeah, well, that happens with old days. You got one there. That happens with old days. You got days. one there. Okay, yeah. Just to make you feel better. Okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. Go down this feed. Make sure to pardon my head here. It's supposed to be a 3 8 slot, but I'm going to make it 7 16 so that it won't bind anywhere. I think that'll be alright. We'll, we'll find out. Alright, now it's touching the surface. I'm just going to skim it along there and see what it looks like. Not exactly level, is it? Right, I think I'm going to get by with it because it's cutting on at least three sides of the end mill all the time. So it's not probably going to grab a whole bunch. I know that probably all the royalty of YouTube would have done it some other way. They'd have got out the uh, rotary table and set it up. And I could have done that. I thought about it. But I wanted to see if I could do that. Sometimes you just you got to try something. There you see, <laughs> it jerked one time and uh, ruined my end mill. So remember folks, don't do stuff you see me do. I'm a professional idiot and uh, prepared, totally prepared to live with the consequences of my mistakes. So, and I don't want to live with the consequences of your mistakes, so just because I do it don't mean you should do it. There you are, totally wiped out end mill. I guess I'll get out the rotary table. Should have done that in the first place. But then I'd have never known if I could get by with doing this, would I? Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.